Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for coming out to worship with us this fine Lord's Day morning. There is, uh, we have a uh, very pleasant, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say it because it's my fault. It's a surprise. But a very pleasant surprise with us this morning. We have Pastor Jeff Kipp from Chosen People Ministries who is with us this morning. Now I say this is a surprise because back in April, I spoke to uh, a lady whose name I cannot remember. Rebecca, thank you, from Chosen People Ministries. Uh, she's in Florida, I believe. And she asked whether we'd like to have... Jeff has been with us two or three times over the years. He's, I, we, we, we will consider him an old friend of the congregation. And uh, he, she asked if we'd like to have him. And I said, of course. Our folks love Jeff. That's great. Um, and, hey, however, it was April. You remember there were things going on in April. Actually, let, let me amend that. There were things not going on in April. And I, we said, oh, December, everything will be better by then. Everything will be completely normal. Everything was not completely normal. However, on, I believe, Monday, Jeff called me and said, are we still on for Sunday? And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh but we are very very glad to have him with us and he will be bringing us the word of god today and talking to us about hanukkah and what hanukkah means in light of the gospel and so anyway very glad to have you jeff welcome thank you um we have now here's the other half of that and that is that he's not just here because he feels like being here. It's very kind of him to be here, but this is also how he supports the work of Chosen People Ministries, which is a Christian ministry to people of Jewish background in the United States and around the world. And you got, as you came in with your bulletin, you got a little pamphlet for, uh, about the work of Chosen People Ministries. Somewhere? No? Anyway, they're back there. All right, uh, Emma, get, just hand them around. Sorry, Emma, I just dropped that on you. <laughs> she was the first person I saw. I should have made Amelia do it, I'm sorry. Will. <laughs> you look like a dog that just had surgery, Will. <laughs> okay, <laughs> any case. <laughs> um... In any case, we will be taking a, an offering today for Chosen People Ministries. And if it, it, you, know, you can either grab an offering envelope, which are also somewhere I don't know where they are, uh, and mark that, CPM. Or, Jeff, how would they make out a check? Just make it out CPM. CPM. Chosen People Ministries. Chosen People Ministries, okay. So we, we want to uh, support the work of uh, Chosen People Ministries. Uh, and uh, that work goes on, like I said, in, around this country and in Israel and in other parts of the world. So um, we're glad to, glad to support that. Um, there are just a couple other announcements. One of them, the other thing that we're glad to support is our own youth group. And one of the things we do to support our own youth group is... Uh, make soup so next sunday 
This is your chance, right? So you have to do it now because we're not having soup luncheons where, unfortunately, we're not having soup luncheons where we all sit down and have soup together. That would be normal and awesome, and we don't do normal and awesome things anymore. Uh, but we will be doing a takeout soup lunch next Sunday. So takeout soup lunch next Sunday. And if you, you have in your bulletin there a menu is that in the bulletin okay there's a hundred things that i think are in the bulletin that aren't in the bulletin it doesn't matter it's okay you want soup you're not gonna know where to get it right <laughs> you're gonna figure it out um in any case we do ask you kindly to indicate what sort of soup you would like and again proceeds go to live god 24 7 mission projects and uh, I was asked last week, do I know what we are doing with the youth group this coming summer? And the short answer is, I do not. Because you may have noticed things aren't happening. And um, we are, however, we do ask you to please pray for the youth group and pray for God's guidance that he would lead us uh, to where he wants us to be and um, use this for his glory so there are um the other the one last announcement i have for you is that um after church today we are inviting our musicians to st stay around after church today and normally we uh we, we pull together a band at christmas and um, we are pulling together a band and we're recording this time. So we'll be recording spread out in here after the service today. So we invite you and encourage you. There is, um, is there anything else I'm supposed to announce? The cookie orders are due next week. Talk about that, dear, please. <laughs> There's a microphone right there. It's good. Supporting the youth group instead of the cookie walk this year they're doing made to order trays so you'll find the order form in your bulletin this week and next week they are due next week and then the trays will be ready for you to pick up on December 20th um, the other announcement is for the kids play uh, we're gonna try to have rehearsal at 5 o'clock on December 19th kids are performing uh, at the service on December 20th very good thank you um, in the meantime, We're reading Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 2. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his root shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Teach us to fear and honor your name, that in you we might know the wisdom and power of God to your eternal glory. Amen.
Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you for the great gift that it is to come into your presence. Lord, we thank you that you admit us into, before your throne, Lord, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless our worship, our prayers, the reading and the preaching of your word, that all of it would be to the glory of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. know what it is to stand in the presence of the maker of the universe? Do you know what an amazing privilege it is to stand in the presence of God? Do you recognize the awesome responsibility that comes with that? Do you recognize that you have no right in yourself to it? but that you were invited into his presence by the sheer grace of God, by his free gift through the blood of Jesus Christ. Scripture declares that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, Jesus Christ is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us from all iniquity. We invite you to join us as we humbly approach the throne of mercy, confessing our sins together, and then using the bulletin that's on the screen, using the, the not the bulletin, the, 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 the thing, <clears throat> on the screen, the prayer that's on the screen, and then and in your bulletin, and then individually in silence, would you pray with me? Almighty God, against you and you alone have we sinned neglecting your word, violating your commandments, and forgetting your righteousness. Forgive us, Father, for Jesus' sake. Teach us true repentance and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to live every day of our lives to the glory of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord from 1 Timothy chapter 1, 
that this saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Know that for the sake of his blood shed on the cross, those who have trusted in him with repentant heart are forgiven and be at peace with God. Amen. Would you join me as we confess together the faith of the whole church in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We have the, uh, again, the we are not passing plates because of... A pe- epidemiological information that is probably completely out of date so we'll (laughs) but we will encourage you we will encourage you this week as always to recognize that what God has given to you is from him and for him and he calls his people to use the first portion of what he has given to them for his purposes with our tithes and our offerings. And again, uh, in particular today, we encourage you to, uh, if you'd like to make an offering to support the work of Chosen People Ministries, um, and the plate is at the back of the room there, if you haven't figured it out yet. And in the meantime, uh, let's stand and sing praise to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all holy heavenly hosts. Praise God, Her Son. You may be seated. Sing, I, 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 I,
We have, uh, this is just a, a personal observation. It is deeply strange to listen to uh, our, for, for, for Jeff's information, because you, you guys know this, but for Jeff's information, our choir director, Nancy, who is not able to be with us today, we're going to pray for her in a minute. Her, her, she heard her back. But uh, she has been in uh, an effort to continue to use uh, war music and worship. She has been having our choir record their individual parts and then has been putting it together. And so every week I listen to my daughter and my wife sing into a phone and it's weird and I hear them sing it separately and then it comes together and anyway so we're we're very grateful for that but we do ask you we have uh, the opportunity uh, to pray for one another here and we do ask you in praying for one another please to pray for Nancy who hurt her back uh, please to pray for I just wrote these down Please continue to pray for Phyllis Daniels, who uh, is in rehabilitation. Uh, please pray for Joe Kurilko, who is ill. Um, please pray for, as always, the work of the church around the world. And we're going to ask you to pray in particular this week for Jeff's congregation in uh, Monroeville there and for... Uh, the work of Chosen People Ministries and for missions to the the nation of Israel. And um, we also would ask you to pray, please, for the church uh, persecuted as each week. Uh, and in particular this week, I would ask you, please, to pray for the church in Lebanon. In Lebanon... The particular, if you, if you remember a couple months back, Beirut blew up. You remember this? I know it's been a complicated year and crowded, but uh, the port in Beirut blew up. And there are, um, there are Christians in Beirut who are working as we speak uh, to aid the people who lost homes and relatives and everything else. Uh, some of these folks are being supported, incidentally, through your tithes, through the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. There is a, uh, a Beirut Blast project, and so we are supporting that. So we ask your prayers for the people of Beirut and the people of Lebanon. Are there other prayer requests you would like us to lift up here this morning? Marla, just one second. What's what's her name? Sorry. Absolutely. Feels like it's taken forever, but I I cuz I that's uh, I had forgotten about that, but please pray for Jess. Eric Thank you, yes. Ruth Rizzo lives over in the tower. Uh, a friend of this congregation is having surgery tomorrow, so please pray for Ruth. Susan. Absolutely, we'll pray for Kristen. Misty. Absolutely. Michelle. Brian, Chrissy, and Tommy, absolutely. Uh, Connie, yeah. I'm, 
Thank you. Jody. Yeah, please do pray for Bunny. Absolutely. Jim, yeah. Okay, we'll pray for Karen. Absolutely. Well, would you, uh, would you pray with me then? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you call us to worship. Lord, we thank you that you call us together, that you have given us a space to pray and the freedom to pray and the, and the great gift of your word. We thank you, Lord, for the great gifts by which you have assured us of the promises of salvation. And we pray, Lord, that you would use us for your glory. Lord, I ask your blessing upon this congregation that you would allow us to be faithful in our witness. Lord, to speak the truth in love that you would use us for your glory that Bentleyville and Ellsworth and Cokeburg and Scenery Hill would hear the gospel I pray Lord for the other congregations in this community the same for them that they would be faithful with the great deposit of faith that you have have given Ask, Lord, your blessing upon our presbytery and upon the church around the world, especially, Lord, those places where the church is, is persecuted, um, where the church is in, in trouble. And in particular, Lord, today I ask, your, Lord, your blessing upon the church in Beirut and in Lebanon and upon the work that is going on there to, that they'd be a blessing to their neighbors and and that they would be a, a witness to Christ we ask Lord your mercy upon those who mourn for the family of Karen Wyndham for her husband who's unable to go to her service that you'd comfort them by the promises of the gospel for Bunny and Karen and Joe and Nancy for Phyllis and Jess and Dylan for Ruth and Kristen and Brian and Chrissy and Tommy and Barb for all those that we hold in our hearts that we have not named Lord we we entrust them to your care and ask that you would display your mercy and your grace toward them Lord we ask your your, your blessing upon our community our state and our nation your guidance for those that you've placed in positions of authority we pray lord for peace and, and, and lord for justice we ask you, lord that you would use your church in this place and around the world um, as a blessing to the world we pray lord for chosen people ministries and for missions to the Jewish people we ask that you would strengthen and guide and 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 use them Lord we I, I pray for my brother Jeff and I ask Lord that you would bless him in the proclamation of the gospel all these things father we ask in the glorious name of Jesus in the words that he taught us to say praying our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jeff, I'm going to turn this over to you. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. I am supposed to just, yes. I'm wait, wait, wait. For children and worship and the lives and seen only, I would like as many kids as possible to stay up here. Okay, yes. So children and worship and the wise men seen only. I don't even know what that means.
are to follow my wife. The, the rest of you, we hope that you hang around and uh, to make him turn that thing upside down or right side up. All right, shalom everyone. Shalom. shalom, shalom. Good to be here. And uh, it's a blessing to be back here at, at uh, First Presbyterian here in Bentleyville. And uh, as I just uh, put my papers here, and uh, um, for those of you who perhaps uh, have uh, never met me before, I'll give you just uh, maybe tell you a little bit about myself real quickly and, and then about. Um, chosen people, ministries. Um, you might detect my New York accent, uh, especially when I like to have a cup of coffee. It kind of comes out. And I'm um, originally from Brooklyn, New York. Um, and uh, growing up, uh, um, I knew that there was a God that has something to do with the Jewish people. After all, he was the God of Israel, uh, the God of Jacob. Uh, and, uh, but I didn't know the Lord from the man in the moon. Uh, but then something happened to me after years, uh, after being a New York Jewish hippie, uh, you know, and uh, on the dark side of the moon and, uh, and just in all sorts of darkness. Uh, and in 1973, I had an encounter with the Lord and I met my Messiah. Uh, in uh, Taos, New Mexico, it changed my life. I got delivered from drugs and demons and darkness and all sorts of uh, ugly, evil things. And I've been walking with the Lord ever since. Um, uh, my wife and I moved here to, uh, to the Pittsburgh area um, in um, um, 1993. So we've been here from, uh, for 27 years. Um, and we're completely grafted in to uh, Pittsburgh soil. We love it. And um, we have pioneered two Messianic congregations. Uh, you might ask, what are they? Uh, it has nothing to do with Masonic lodges. Messianic congregations is the Jewish expression of the gospel, of faith in Jesus. Um, and we meet on Saturday mornings. We have a congregation in Squirrel Hill, which is the Jewish community of, of Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, in fact, until the weather turned really cold, we were out there every Tuesday afternoon uh, in Murray Avenue, the main drag, uh, sharing the gospel. I set up a little prayer station there um, and invite people uh, to pray. I just say, would you like some prayer? And a lot of people, you know, everybody needs prayer, right? And, uh, and I just offer them, I said, hey, can I pray for you? Would you like some prayer? Do you have any prayer needs? It's a disarming way to get people to open up and then I can just share the love of the Father, the love of uh, Yeshua Jesus on them and, and pray the word of God over them and, uh, and allow the Lord to just uh, do his work. Um, and um, anyways, uh, the work of Chosen People Ministries. Chosen People Ministries is the oldest Jewish mission in North America. It actually began in 1894. We just celebrated our 120th anniversary last year. Um, and uh, a Orthodox Jewish rabbi by the name of um, um, uh, Leopold Cohn came from Hungary, from Eastern Europe. He wanted to know who is this Messiah to whom Moses talks about and all the, the, the prophets did speak of. Who, who is this mysterious Messiah? And well, the Lord led him to Brooklyn, New York, my hometown. And one day walking down the streets in uh, Brownsville, Brooklyn, um, he heard the gospel being preached in Yiddish. Uh, and, and lo and behold, he went inside, there were over a hundred Jewish people just worshiping the Lord, uh, worshiping Yeshua, uh, and before too long he accepted his Messiah, he led his family to the Lord, and he started the Brownsville Mission to the Jews, 1894, and before too long it went through numbers of uh, evolutions, and about 40 years ago we changed the name to, to Chosen People Ministries. We have over 100, over 100 Jewish missionaries and uh, Messianic rabbis, pastors, evangelists all over the world 
uh, 30 workers in Israel and Russia, Ukraine, all across Europe, South America, uh, even as far away as New Zealand and Australia. So that's a, just a little bit in a nutshell of um, who I am um, and uh, Chosen People Ministries. Um, how many here are familiar with Hanukkah? Uh, if you, are you familiar with Hanukkah? Hanukkah is all about you might see a menorah, a candelabra in someone's window. You know, it's an eight uh, stemmed special Hanukkah or uh, candlestick uh, called a menorah. And uh, uh, you might have heard of children playing something called a dreidel that's like a Jewish spinning top, you know, and, um, and have heard the story of the Maccabees. Anybody here heard the story of the Maccabees? Uh, just an amazing story. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Maccabees chapter 10. <laughs> Oh, nobody's doing that. All right. <laughs> That's not in our Bible, but you do find it in the Apocrypha, but it's not inspired scripture um, in our Bible. But I want to tell you a little bit uh, of history, and I want to connect some dots for you. I always tell everybody, and when I come here, that the new is in the old concealed, and the old is in the new revealed. It's a seamless garment. And when you understand the Jewish roots of your faith, if you understand the Jewish roots of Christianity uh, and, and that it's a seamless garment, it helps connect all the dots. Uh, and so, um, you know, there are uh, historians say there were four great world empires. Those four great world empires throughout world history, the first one we're all familiar with. You've heard of the name King Nebuchadnezzar in the days of Daniel and Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and off the bed you go, right? Abednego. Well, uh, that's the first great empire, Babylon. The second great empire was known as the Medes-Persian Empire. The book of Esther takes place uh, in that um, great world empire. Um, and, um, uh, and then you have the third great world empire. Uh, there was a great um, conqueror, uh, uh, world conqueror by the name of Alexander the Great. If you remember your history, which unfortunately they're not teaching very much anymore today in our schools, but Alexander the Great was very, very young when he was like 29, 30 years old. He conquered the whole known world at that time. And then he died at a very young age, I think at 32. Uh, to some sexual transmitted disease, and then his kingdom was divided up for, uh, to four generals. And uh, this happened um, um, about um, uh, 400, um, you know, years before the birth of Christ. And um, and the one of those four generals had um, they had responsibility. Um, uh, it, it over what we call the promised land, the holy land. And this took place around 100, uh, 168 BCE, before the Common Era. And his name was Antiochus IV. Antiochus IV was such a narcissist and was so um, in love and enamored with himself and his own power that he wanted everyone to call him uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, and if you're familiar with the word epiphany, and we all hope to have an epiphany every now and then, that's just God manifesting himself and revealing himself. If you have an epiphany, you're experiencing the Lord, right? Uh, he wanted everyone to call him uh, basically God in the flesh. God, in effect, a lot of world leaders and political leaders think they're God in the flesh, right? They have what they call a Christ complex or a Messiah complex. Well, Antiochus IV, Antiochus Epiphanes, then was the ruler, the tyrant, over um, that part of the world in the Middle East, the, the Holy Land. And he instituted a policy, a policy that uh, theologians called and, and, and historians Hellenization. Um, and of course, oh, let me not leave out the fourth great world empire that happened after the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, and that of course was the time of which our Savior was born, it was during the time of that first, fourth great world empire. But this is during the time of the third great world empire, the Greek Empire. 
And um, he instituted a policy that I believe was kind of the ancient way of talking about globalization. In other words, Hellenization, he wanted to make everyone uh, into Greeks. And so everyone, every place he went where he conquered uh, a nation, a tribe, a land, an ethnic group, he would basically force them to wear uh, Greek dress, uh, Greek clothes, eat uh, Greek food, which is not a bad thing, right? Amen? And, uh, and, and to uh, also to learn the Greek language and to worship the Greek gods. Now, of course, the supreme Greek god uh, you might be familiar with, his name was Zeus, and, or otherwise known as Jupiter and uh, Zeus, and so they would go and they would force people to give, give up their own uh, ethnicity, their own religions, their own gods, their own uh, language. Uh, they would be completely assimilated and become part of the superior, greater, more dominant uh, Greek world. Now, most people were secular or pagan, and they immediately uh, thought, you know, had no problem with uh, assimilating into Greek life and Greek culture and, uh, and even the worship of their gods. And most of the Jewish people complied. And it's been that way really for all history. God has always just had a remnant that would resist being secularized or Hellenized or uh, politicized or, uh, uh, and, and, but there was a remnant of Jewish people um, who refused to bow the knee to any other God but the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. So in, this was, took place in around 168 BCE. Um, I guess Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, um, <clears throat> so... Uh, one day, the Greek army rode into a little town called Modin, which is about seven kilometers from Jerusalem. It's actually a modern city today, Modin. And they, what the Greek army would do is they would erect a statue of Zeus, and then they would bring all the people into the square, in the community square, and they would demand that the people would sacrifice a pig. Everybody say, oy vey. Say, oy vey. They would demand that they sacrifice a pig, very unkosher thing to do for Jewish people, right? On the altar of their Greek god Zeus. In fact, they even went into the temple, the temple in Jerusalem, and erected a statue, an idol of Zeus, and defiled the temple and sacrificed swine pigs on the altar in the holy temple in Jerusalem. And one day, uh, a group of soldiers rode into Modin. They gathered all the people into the city square, and they demanded that the elderly Jewish priest, Jewish Levite, his name was Mattathias, to sacrifice a swine, a pig, on the altar of Zeus. And uh, Mattathias drew out his sword and actually put the captain of the guard to death. Those that were with him, his sons, uh, took up their swords and they slew the Greek soldiers. They gathered themselves together and they made an exit stage left to the Judean hills and they hid there and they began what you can call one of the early strategies of guerrilla warfare. And people who also identified with them that would refuse to lose their Jewish identity and refuse to worship false gods and idols, uh, they would gather together and they began to fight this uh, uh, greater, more dominant, powerful Greek army. And it was a classic David versus Goliath battle, which has happened many times in history. If you know the story of Gideon, that's another example. And lo and behold, for about a three-year period, they became very successful. They knew the lay of the land. They knew the terrain. They would go down 
and they would attack the Greek armies and then they would escape back into the Judean hills and hideaways and places like En Gedi. Uh, and, uh, and the Greeks were very, very frustrated. Well, finally, the elderly priest passed away uh, and the leadership of um, this remnant his name was Judas, and they became, or Judah, and they became so successful that the people began to call them the Maccabees. The Maccabees, which means the hammer. And he was known as Judah Maccabeus, or the hammer, and then those that were with him, his brothers, and, um, and the other soldiers were known as the Maccabees. And they had such great success that they were just wearing down Antiochus and his army um, and uh, to the point where after three years trouble began a brewing in other parts of Antiochus Epiphanes uh, kingdom and his realm and they were larger fish to fry and he was his own um, you know position was being threatened and finally he up and left the Holy Land and they just finally they said, well, these Jews are not worth it. And they quit on them and they left the Holy Land. And a great miracle happened. David, the Maccabees, defeated that great and most powerful army of its day, Antiochus and the Greek army. Now this is the background to the story uh, of Hanukkah. And you may say to me, Pastor... Uh, well, you can call me rabbi like some people do, or just call me Jeff. But um, uh, it, you know, we might say pastor. So what does this have to do with, uh, with Christmas? Because the title of my message is No Christmas, No, no Hanukkah, No Christmas. If there were no Hanukkah, there would be no Christmas. If Satan... And all the powers of darkness would have been successful through Antiochus Epiphanes, who, by the way, the Jews just called them Epimanes. That means Antiochus the crazy person. <laughs> Not Antiochus Epiphanes, but Antiochus the crazy person, Epimanes. But if he would have succeeded in completely destroying the Jewish uh, identity, their ethnicity, their worship of the one true God, uh, and the Jewish people would have just disappeared into Hellenism, into that greater Greek culture and peoplehood, and there would have been no Jewish people, no chosen people for the Messiah to be born through and to uh, 168 years later. Thus, if there were no Hanukkah, there would have been no Christmas. And uh, God preserved Israel... Uh, as he has throughout all history, he preserved the Jewish people, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, so that he can bring the Messiah into this world. And you know, with the, the, the blessing of what we call the Abrahamic uh, blessing, he said, in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen? Well, the first thing that the Maccabees did at the defeat of Antiochus and as he left their, their country was they rushed to the temple in Jerusalem. And as they rushed to the temple and they cleansed the temple of all the idols and all the spilled blood and the animal sacrifices, they cleansed the temple and they found they have something in the temple that was called the Nur Tamid, or the Everlasting Flame. How many of you here have ever been to Arlington National Cemetery, where you have the tomb of the unknown soldier, and there's an everlasting flame, an eternal flame. They get the everlasting or eternal flame from the Hanukkah story, from the Nur Tamid, the everlasting flame that was never supposed to go out in the temple. And they only found, according to tradition, a one day's worth of oil. And they lit the menorah, they lit the candle, uh, candelabra, and lo and behold, that one day's worth of oil lasted eight days and nights until more oil can be procured and, and prepared, because it was special anointed oil, 
only for the temple and to be brought back to the temple in Jerusalem. And thus, Hanukkah is known as the rededication of the temple, the Feast of Dedication. And it's also known as the Festival of Lights. And it's celebrated for eight days. And so you have the menorah, and there's eight candles, and there's a ninth candle called the shamas, which means the servant. And on the first night of Hanukkah, the shamas candle is always lit first, and you light the first candle from right to left, and you light the first candle for the first night, and on the second night, then you light the next two candles, and then the third night, the first three candles, and you do that for eight days and eight nights with special prayers and blessings, you know, uh, uh, that you uh, light them for. And uh, this is known as the Festival of Nights. Now I want to um, open up my Bible and read a certain portion of Scripture. And if you have your Bibles, you can read with me or you can just write the Scripture down. In John's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 22. John's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 22. At that time... The Feast of Dedication took place. He's talking of Hanukkah. The Feast of Dedication, the Festival of Lights. It was winter, and Yeshua, Jesus, was walking in the temple in the portion, in the portico of Solomon. What was Yeshua doing walking in the temple, in the temple area, during the festival of Hanukkah. And then as you read the rest of the chapter, there's this amazing uh, dialogue going on and how Yeshua, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and they know my voice. And, and, and he says, other sheep I have that I will also add to my sheep. And he's speaking uh, of the proliferation of the gospel first through all the Jewish apostles and the Jewish disciples and then uh, bringing the gospel to Cornelius' house and the Gentiles through Peter and then through the apostle Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles who still always went to the Jew first and to the synagogue first and, but always preaching the gospel um, you know, throughout the Roman road, uh, throughout the world. And, uh, and, and here... Do you perhaps think that Jesus was saying to the people all around him, do you know who I am? Do you know why I'm here? Do you know who you are? And uh, remember he told them, destroy this temple. And he was speaking of the temple of his body. And in three days I will resurrect it. But they didn't understand what he was saying. And he only had to reveal that to them later on after his resurrection. And they remembered that he said, destroy this temple and I'll res resurrect it in three days. And then Paul says to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, and he says in verse 19 and 20. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit uh, who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you're not your own? You have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Um, I remember when I was a young believer in Yeshua, we learned a song, probably maybe some of your children have learned it. Know you not, know you not, you are the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, and, and, and so we have become the Lord's temple. And, uh, and just as the Maccabees rushed to rededicate that temple upon their victory over Antiochus, um, this is a wonderful message that, that it's a wonderful time of year to rededicate our temple, our church. We're at the temple of God corporately and communally and, and um, uh, uh, collectively and also individually. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. Amen? In fact, Messiah, where you get, uh, of course, in Greek, it's Christ, or in English, it's Christ, but Christ in Hebrew is Messiah. Mashiach in the Hebrew means son of oil. And uh, our Father in heaven is the anointer, 
The Messiah means anointed one, and the Holy Spirit is the anointing, and he is the oil in our lamps. You know that wonderful scripture, and Amy Grant made it into a song many years ago, thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And Jesus talks about the parable of the ten virgins that the wise virgins, the five wise virgins, kept oil in their lamps. They made sure they had oil in their lamps when the Lord, their bridegroom, would appear. And the five foolish ones let their oil go out. And, and so what a wonderful time to really ponder, Lord, help me make sure that I have oil in my lamp. Help me spend time with you. You know, uh, we're, we're living in such a weird, strange time with this pandemic, uh, but some of us uh, have more time now. We need to redeem the time for the days are evil and spend time with the Lord. Spend time uh, with the Word of God. Spend time with this holy book that's been preserved through the ages by the martyr's blood. Spend time and we're reading good and healthy uh, spiritual books and devotionals. Spend time and work on your prayer life as you're exercising. Exercise your prayer life more and make sure there is oil in your lamp because as sure as I'm standing here today, one day... There's going to be a knock on the door and there's going to be a voice that says, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Amen? And the coming of the Lord is near. We do not know what hour or what day, but we know the times and the seasons. And the Lord could return. And he's returning one day soon. He could return for any of us any day. Amen? I could be going home and the Lord could say, It's time. And take me home as I'm, you know, uh, riding home. And that would be okay with me. Uh, but he, he is coming back soon. And one day that rapture will come. And, uh, and so Hanukkah is uh, the feast of dedication. And I just exhort and encourage all of us to rededicate the temple once again today. And make sure there's oil in our lamps. And... Um, and um, Hanukkah is known as the Festival of Lights. And if thank, I thank the Lord that he preserved the Jewish people, he preserved Israel, that their light, that he didn't let the enemy put that light out. Amen? And uh, that he kept that light still shining. And, uh, and if there was no Festival of Lights, there would have been no light of the world. That the Festival of Lights led to 168 years later to the light of the world being born through a Jewish virgin by the name of Miriam. That was her Hebrew name, Miriam, Mary, and, and into, you know, that perfect, pure and holy uh, Jewish medulla and virgin. Unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders and, and, the, and the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Amen? And so we see here the connection between Hanukkah and Christmas. If there was no Hanukkah, there would have been no Christmas. The festival of lights led to the light of the world. And um, there was a reason that Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon during the days of the Feast of Dedication. Um, another picture in the book of Revelation. It talks about the glorified Lord walking one like unto the Son of Man, walking amidst the seven golden candlesticks. You may say the seven golden menorahs. Jesus is walking amidst the seven golden candlesticks. What a beautiful picture. And of course, each candlestick is supposed to be the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church. Uh, and that is the church that have not denied his name that have not allowed their light to go out, that have not become just nominal and just like the world. You see, there is a, a tremendous pressure going on and has been going on for a long time 
to make the church just like the world. That there's no difference between the church and the world. That you can't tell any difference or see any difference. But we are to be different. We're to be like the Maccabees. We're to be like that remnant and not allow uh, the enemy to, to blot out and, and to take away our distinctiveness, our faith our loyalty to the Lord, our commitment, our dedication, uh, and, and our, our, our trust in him. We are to remain very salty and full of the light. And there's a difference between light and darkness. There's a difference between good and evil and righteousness and unrighteousness. Amen? We're not to be exactly like the world. We're to be distinct, uh, distinct and separate and different from the world, in the world, but not of the world, not like the world. And, and so um, the Lord is calling us to continually come out of her. The world is just like a spiritual Babylon. And he's calling us to come out of Babylon, which means confusion. And we need not be confused about who we are and who he is. Amen? And... Um, Lastly, let me just mention about, once again, the menorah. So you have this beautiful picture right there on your screen, and that just gives me Yeshua bumps when I see that <laughs> on your screen. And, and, uh, and, and so you see the middle uh, candle is called Shamas, which means servant. And it is the first candle that's lit, and then it lights every other candle until eight days uh, are fulfilled, eight nights are fulfilled uh, in the Hanukkah celebration. And John, in his gospel in chapter one, speaking of, uh, of the Messiah, speaking of our Yeshua, Jesus, it says in verse nine, he is the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. In fact, one of the names in the book of Isaiah of our Messiah, that mysterious one who was to come, is called the servant of the Lord. The servant of the Lord. And these scriptures and promises of this mysterious Messiah are called the servant songs of Isaiah. He is the shamas. He is the servant of the Lord that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Even those that don't know, know him, that remain in darkness, the sun is still shining, S-O-N, and he is still the son of God, the son of man, fully God and fully man, and he is the light of the world, amen? He is the light, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all, and he wants to let our light shine. And so this wonderful Advent season, let me just say this. When I was a young Jewish boy and I didn't know the Lord from the man in the moon, let me say that um, one of the things that always touched my heart during this season, I didn't know who Christ was. I didn't know who Jesus or Mr. and Mrs. Christ was. I, sometimes I'd be called bad names and said that I was responsible for his murder or something, and I didn't understand all that. But one of the things that always touched my heart were those incredible, powerful Christian hymns and Christian carols. And uh, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and Ransom, Captive, Israel. You know, and Hark, uh, you know, I didn't know who Harold the Angel was, but I love that hymn. Hark, the Harold Angel sing, Glory to the Newborn King. And all those beautiful songs. My personal favorite has been for the last, I think, five, six years. Um, Mary, have you heard? Oh, that one gives me Yeshua bumps. And uh, God is getting his message out. And God has raised up ministries like Chosen People Ministries to bring the gospel back to the very people, the Jewish people, the very people who brought the gospel to all of us to every people. And, uh, and so, uh, please pray for us. Pray for our ministry in Squirrel Hill and the greater Pittsburgh area. Pray for Chosen People Ministries. Um, and our ministry in Israel and all over the world is pretty challenging to share the gospel uh, during 
you know, this pandemic and COVID-19 and they're figuring out lots of different ways of trying to share the gospel uh, on the internet, online, with Zoom meetings and what have you. But I'd love to send you, I, I put out a little prayer letter that I send every, out every month, uh, 400 words, which is uh, um, pretty hard, but uh, just a short 400 words. And I'd love to send it to you, Pastor Andy, you get my prayer letter? You sh oh, okay. Well, you're getting it. Anyways, we'd love for all of you to get it. And I know you get a lot of junk mail. I know that. But I promise you, if you, if you receive it, it'll sanctify your mailboxes. But we'd love to send it to you. And if you're interested, I have a little book table over here on the side. I'd love you to come and, and introduce yourselves to me. We don't booze, but we do schmooze. Amen. And I'd love to greet you, and we have some wonderful materials there, some, some wonderful books and uh, materials. And I'd love to send you our newsletter. If you're interested, you could just fill out your name and your address, and it just tears right off. And uh, I'd like to, like to send that to you and just uh, uh, ask you to pray for us, because it's a tough ministry. I was telling Pastor just a few little while ago, Jewish people have never really rejected Jesus. What they rejected was a false Christianity, a false Christianity of hate and of, uh, uh, of murder, uh, of, of, of hostility and, and uh, evil, uh, of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of anti-Semitism and racism. Um, they've never met the true Jesus. And so that God is changing that today through ministries like ours uh, to share and present the true face of Messiah because he loves us. Amen. He loves his ancient chosen people. They still exist even despite crusades and inquisitions and pogroms and holocaust. And here they are back on their land again. That's not a coincidence. And holy city Jerusalem is back in their hands. And Jesus is coming back soon. And he's coming back to Jerusalem. Amen? And, uh, and so we'd love to uh, just commend um, your prayers and support for Chosen People Ministries and for us. And with that, let me just uh, ask us to take a moment and pray, okay? Father, we thank you for this beautiful season that begins, Lord God, um, uh, Advent has begun uh, last week. <laughs> And we thank you for the Feast of Dedication, the Festival of Lights, Hanukkah, which begins Thursday night. And Lord, thank you for preserving the Jewish people through the Maccabees. And uh, thank you for this wonderful Christmas season. Let it not be about religion. Let it not be about Santa Claus and, and Lord God and, and elves and uh, reindeers, Lord God. Lord, it's not about, uh, you know, a reindeer with a... Uh, with a light bulb for a nose. Father God, it's, it's about Jesus, the light of the world. It's about the miracle of the incarnation, the miracle of, uh, 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 of Yeshua, Jesus coming to be born, Lord God, in Mary's womb, and then now being born within the womb of our spirit by the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Lord, let, well, let us, even though we're in a difficult time, where they're telling us not to gather together and to be separate. But Lord God, we pray that you keep us all safe and that we would still have a wonderful Christmas, Lord, that we may truly know all of the presence that you can give, your presence, and in your presence this fullness of joy. And let us celebrate you and worship you again and uh, with all of our heart and uh, Lord God, we pray for America, we pray for Israel, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we pray for the peaceful transference, Lord God, of, uh, uh, we pray for this new president-elect, and uh, regardless of how we think of how things were, Lord God, we still need to pray, we still need to pray, but thank you, Lord, that the answer really isn't in politics and in personalities and the answer is in Jesus. He's our king. He's our king. He's our lawgiver. The government is on his shoulders. We look to you and to your kingdom. And we know if we, as we do, all these things will be added unto us. So thank you, Lord. 
In the name of your Jesus, amen. Please stand and I'll give the ironic benediction first in Hebrew. It goes like this. Panavalecha, via same lacha, shalom. The Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you, and the Lord make his face to shine upon you, and the Lord be gracious to you, and the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, fill you with his presence, and give you his his peace, his shalom. B'shem Yeshua Meshikenu, in the name of Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. <laughs>